So a couple weeks ago, I went and watched the new Spider-Man movie and the art in this movie and the style of this movie is just fantastic, just like the first one. So I wanted to take some time and analyze the style and look at some of the things that make the style very unique and then try and do a painting of my own using some of the techniques and styles from this movie. So one of the things that makes their style very nice and appealing and unique is they, they try and bring a comic book style into animation and make it really pop. And the way to do that is really use simplicity. Simplicity in design and simplicity in, in the paintings in general. But the simplicity is very intentional. So what I mean by that is the things that are in focus might have lots of detail and lots of uh, color and different things but the things that are out of focus are very simplistic and they have really simplified it with just simple shapes and simple brush strokes to give it this style where you're so focused on what is in detail and what is in focus but then stuff that are not important are very simplified and very out of focus and we can look at a couple examples so this one is one example for example we can see Spider-Man is the focus and then the stuff that are out of focus are very simplified. So for example, the stuff that are in the in the background here, the pastries, they're just really simplified in the shape and there's not that many that much detail. Another another example is right this one, right? This scene here, we can see the background is very simplified and it's almost like a rough sketch. So you can see there's not that many details as far as color goes or the sketch goes and everything is simplified but it's very intentional the simplification is not just random lines or random brush strokes but the simplification is in a way that detailed things are simplified into one brush stroke for example so this is another example here where we see for example spider-man is jumping in and the background so for example on the left here it is almost like a sketch very there's not that many details not that many color variation the whole building is almost one color with just a few sketch lines that outlines that this is a building and it may, might have some windows but there are not that many details same thing on the right there are a little bit more uh, graffiti maybe but generally speaking they have really simplified it into just simple shapes the other thing that they use a lot is chromatic aberration in relaying depth and in in just the scenes in general so for example a lot of places when they want to relay depth you can use for example blur or gaussian blur for example to to show that the background is blurry and it's not in focus but the way they do it here is to use chromatic aberration and we see this all over so for example in this scene here we can see it a little bit where part of these areas here you see it's chromatic aberration uh, and we'll show a couple more examples over here it's very obvious so the further it is the more prominent the chromatic aberration is and the offset is a lot more to show that depth so you can see where he is in focus Mal Morales is in focus there is not that much or almost any but then when we go to things that are out of focus for example the windows and the background and and the hallway you can see more and more of that here is another example where the background is completely out of focus by using the same technique while the characters are in focus and very outlined and no chromatic aberration so they also use it for characters and sometimes very extremely to showcase a certain mood or a certain thing. For example, in this in this scene here, you can see how Gwen has a little bit, not too much, but then the further we go in the background and the further we get closer to this portal, for example, the the more intense it is and it's almost here where you can't see any details and and the chromatic aberration is extreme. Now, when it comes to the comic book style, there are a few things that make the style unique and make the give the feeling of, of a comic book. The first thing is that is used all over is the halftone style. 
so you can see here and what that is is these dotted lines so you can see that in every scene almost so you can see here in the background they use that where those dots are there and sometimes they're uh, on the character where the highlight is so for example here you can see where the rim light is they use a lot of that halftone uh, brush to give it that feel and give it that style they also use a lot of lines to give that uh, comic book style so another example here we can see this this character here in the background the way to make them out of focus they just use that half tone style or half tone brush to just give the outline of a person but then there aren't any details and using that gives it that feeling so this scene actually they use a lot of those uh, the comic book style stuff in it so we talked about the half tone brush or the half tone uh, part and then there's the line so you can see a lot of places there's these um, diagonal lines that go across different things to give it that painterly look or give it that comic book style and then we have the chromatic aberration in the background to put things out of focus even some of the characters here they have that and then the things that are in focus or the center of attention are here in the center and we can see there's there aren't too many chromatic aberration there so everything is detailed and in focus and everything else in the background using these techniques just become out of focus and it guides our attention to what we need to see the other thing that they do to give it that comic book style is they take some certain spots of the movie and they almost take a frame or two and make it a still frame and then they paint it in a very simplified and comic book style and we see that a lot especially in in parts that is uh, there's a lot of motion a lot happening for example this shot here where they just took a, almost a screenshot and then painted it simplified it in a very comic book style and added it to the scene so we can see here that it goes back and forth between comic book style and the movie style and then we see this again for example right here where uh, spider-man or miles morales is jumping and then it suddenly stops and take a screenshot and then the the shot here is very simplified even just there's no sh light and shadow too much and then the shadow is just simplified by simple black brush strokes so for example, the leg that is in the back is simply just some straight black lines to show that it's in the background or in the back and then everything else in the front is uh, very the same color. So you can see here this shot is very comic book style. It's very simplified. You can see the line art. You can see the simple uh, color and then the shading is just done using lines. So we see this over and over again and we see this a lot where you can see it goes to this shot where everything is simplified, simple colors and it looks very almost comic books and then it continues the action and it goes back to the action. So these still images that are just put in, in the scene really makes the scene pop even more and it gives this unique look to it. So now let's jump into my own painting and try and do a cityscape or a city scene in that style and use some of the techniques or the things that we saw they do in the in the movie. So the first thing that uh, I did, of course, uh, similar to anything else, start with a rough sketch. And then after that, I added some, some perspective lines for the foreground to add those buildings that are close to close to the camera and then just added more details and more sketch lines to finish up the line art and have the basis for that then simply added some background just to give it the colors that i want and then on different layers i started adding different buildings so the front ones each building was a different layer and then for the uh, skyscrapers or the buildings in the background 
every layer almost or every every few buildings were on a separate layer just to make it easier for me to modify them or add things to them afterwards so when it comes to the windows i used a couple of resources that i think are very valuable and very very important to know about and i'll link those two resources here the first one is a video by uh, Devin about painting a city with her custom brushes and she has a link to her custom brushes in that video so you can watch that and download those brushes if you want and then the other resource was by uh, Daniel and I'll put the link here also where he he talks about the uh, spider-verse also and how to paint buildings using the Sp spider-verse style so on a new layer, I uh, added the window and have it in, uh, in the color black. And then using the distort function, you can put it in perspective and then duplicate that layer and then uh, clip it to the original layer and then change the color and add the light in there. And then by just nudging it a little bit into the right perspective, you can make the edges of the window to come up and it gives that 3D look and gives that perspective look to it. Then did the similar thing with the other windows and other, other buildings. Very simple if you have the brushes and you can just use the distort function to put them in the right perspective and it saves you a lot of time. One of the things that the Spider-Verse does is that there's not that much detail in the windows and things are simplified using a hard round brush. But the idea of simplicity here is to imply something. So for example, uh, in some of the windows, maybe there is the curtain. So you can just using a couple brush strokes, uh, add that in there. Or maybe somewhere else there is an extra light so you can just use a different color light or a different color brush to add that light there. Maybe there's a TV, maybe there's a couch blocking the view. So using those ideas and those thoughts, you can really add in and paint the windows with very simple shapes and you don't really have to spend too much time adding details. So here's, this is what's important, simplicity, but intentional simplicity. So we don't wanna add random brush stroke because that's what I thought it was at first. But then as I thought more about it and I saw what they did more, I realized that yes, it's a bit abstract, but it's intentional. So when it comes to adding details, it all takes time, but if you're just patient enough and take your time, you can really get a lot of it done. So I just spent some time, because everything was on different layers, I could just add extra layers and clip them to the existing layers and just add details. For example, uh, add some light and shadow or, or maybe even add extra things like, for example, satellites or antennas, and you can really simplify it. So the way they do it in their paintings and the Spider-Verse paintings or it's Spider-Verse style, it's just really simple. You don't have to add too much details. And then the next thing that I wanted to do is add a little bit of texture. So part of the brush pack, there is a brick a brush that you can use, but I didn't want to use that. So I, instead I ended up using just a square brush, just using a lighter and a darker uh, color. I added that those shapes that of almost like a brick and I didn't put it everywhere, just added it in a few spots and it gave it a little bit of character and a little bit of texture. So it doesn't look like just a plain uh, box. And then after that, yeah, just spend some more time, add more details as much as you want. I just decided to add a little bit more detail. For example, add a few other vents and a few, uh, for example, maintenance boxes. Now, when it comes to the halftone uh, effect, it's very simple. So create a new file and make it maybe 100 by 100 uh, pixels. Doesn't really have to be anything fancy. Make the background transparent, so remove the background. And then using a hard round brush, just add a circle in the middle and then you can center it. Then after that, you can go to the edit function and then you go to define pattern and then you can just call it a name. For example, I call it half tone for my case because that's how what I'll be using it for. And simply put, you do now have that, that effect. So now the next thing you can do when you want to use it, you go pick a hard round brush, then you open the settings of your brush, you click on the texture tab, and then you can, uh, at the top, you can select the pattern, 
So once you select that pattern, then you can reduce the depth and the scale until you get the effect that you want and the size that you want. So now that we have this effect, we can start using it. So anywhere that I that there were some lights, I started using it. So for example, for the cars, I just added the yellow and red lights in that halftone effect. Same with the lights for the bridge. Instead of adding details, too many details, I added, I used this, uh, this brush or this technique to add this effect. And then I went back on top of it and added um, hard light layer and added a little bit of uh, light to those halftone brush strokes using a soft brush to give it the effect of the light. When it comes to the background and all the buildings in the background, you apply the same method that we did for the front windows. Uh, you can go through the brushes that Devin has and pick whichever one you like for the buildings and start adding those. And then using the distort function, you can change the perspective and put them in the right place. The best way to do it, and it takes a lot of time, is to make sure you have different layers for different windows so that you're, when you want to distort them, you can easily distort them and put them into perspective. Because if they're all on the same layer, distortion becomes a little bit more tricky and difficult because you have to do the selection every time and, and so on. So then after I had everything done, all the windows done in the same color, I went back and locked all these layers and then using different colors, I went back and added color variation, different, different lights pretty much from those windows. Not all windows are giving that yellow uh, bright light, so some windows might be closed and there's no light and others might have blue, green, purple light. So just going in and adding those to give it a little bit of a nice effect, a nice variation, rather than having everything look yellow. So then when it comes to the characters, I just wanted to do a quick uh, quick sketch and add two characters into this painting. So I did my sketches, and then I just used a brush to just uh, put in the colors, and really simple. There's not too many color variations, there's not too many things. Really try to keep it simple and then added some basic uh, highlights and rim light to it because I, because these characters are going to be very small in the painting so you don't really need too many details and then using the same half tone brush method i added that effect to parts of the rim light and parts of the light and shadows that are on the characters and i did the same thing with the other character and then once you go into your painting, you can also add the same effect on the buildings, on the sky to add that half tone effect into the painting and give it that look that they have in, in, the, in the movie. Now, when it comes to chromatic aberration, at this stage, the background already has it, but let me show you how you do it for the character. So you duplicate the layer with the character and then you nudge it a little bit. So you move it a little bit so it's offset. So I moved it up and left a little bit, and then you double click on the layer, and then you can remove one of the channels. So in this case, we remove the green channel. Removing different channels gives you the different effect. So you can just play around with it and see which one you like, and then you can erase parts that you want all want that chromatic aberration on. So for example, we just wanted it on the upper and left side, so we can remove it on the other side. Same with the, with the other character, exact same method. Duplicate, nudge it a little bit, and then double click and then select the channels that you don't want to be shown and then it really gives that effect. There are other ways of doing it but this is a simple way of, of doing the chromatic aberration. So this was really the painting that I, I was working on. I tried to do a few things to replicate some of the style from the movie and try and have something that represents it. Um, I hope you like this video. Thank you for watching and see you in the next one.